Dolphins fans, we are closing in on 62,000 subscribers. We are 344 away. We put out daily content with sometimes videos twice a day and are live every single Dolphins game day. If you love the Dolphins and want the season to turn around but also want the best coverage, hit that sub button. All right, the Dolphins got some great news and some bad news following their Week 5 win against the New England Patriots. It goes both ways, folks, but all I know is that it's a good thing that Miami is 2-3 and three rather than 1-4 and four because the season is absolutely back on the table, and I could not be more happier about it. But the good news and great news retains to quarterback Tua Tungvaloa because Mike McDaniel did have a press conference today despite the bye week coming up this weekend and was asked about Tua as there's only one more game that he's mandated to miss, that being Week 7 against the Indianapolis Colts, which means Tua is able to return after one more game against the Cardinals against in Week 8 if he's feeling up to it. And when Barry Jackson asked, Mike McDaniel said Tua has some expert consultation this week, and the final stages of protocol won't be achieved until we bring him back off of IAR, but also said everything so far is good, referring to Tua and the injury and the way he's healing from that concussion. And I got to be honest, like I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I've been starting to say this for a couple of weeks now. With everything that has been said on Tua and the way he doesn't have any concussion-like symptoms right now, it really does feel like he's going to be able to return at the first opportunity in Week 8 against the Arizona Cardinals. Like we mentioned, no symptoms right now by all reports. Schefter reported a week ago that he might be eligible to return and be ready to go in Week 8, and he's been in the building conversing with teammates, being in meetings, hanging out. Like, he's doing all the right things that would at least display to us and display to me that he will be able to return at the earliest. And I know some Dolphins fans might be saying, well, then if that's the case, why was he placed on IR? When you have had the amount of concussions Tua has had, you need to play it safe. Let his brain get the proper amount of time to fully heal from that concussion so his next time he's on the field it's not as likely that he suffers another one because a fourth one really might be the end of his career but it seems like everything's heading in the right direction for Tua to be back in week eight and then this tweet really hammered home that point in my opinion because Barry once again asked if any medical expert said Tua needs more time after he's eligible to come off IR and clears protocol which by the way would be five weeks after the initial concussion in week two. McDaniel said nothing negative so far, but we're still in the process. I mean, it just feels like the way Mike is answering these questions. He doesn't want to put a timetable on it. He doesn't want to put anything set in stone or anything concrete, but it does really feel like he is going to be back for week eight, which is absolutely huge for the Miami Dolphins because, yes, I know a lot of the fan base has not been happy with how the season has went, and I know we are a win at home against the Tennessee Titans, which they should have won, by the way, from being 3-2 and two and having a win record after five weeks and being tied for the top of the division through five weeks as the Bills have lost two in a row and they're only three and two. Like there is a missed opportunity for sure by the Miami Dolphins against the Tennessee Titans, but you can't deny that there is a still in a realistic outcome for this team to make a playoff push and be in the postseason. When you think of the next six games for the Miami Dolphins after the week six bye, it is very, very manageable. You get two weeks to prepare for a Colts team that has been really struggling defensively and has had their fair sh share of injuries as well. We're talking about one of the worst defensive teams in all football, by the way, in the Annapolis Colts. So I think you're going to be able to move the football against them and do some nice things. Week 8 at home against Arizona. Now we're working potentially with the assumption that Tua is back. And then the next five games after he returns, Cardinals at home. Arizona's a very beatable team, especially with Tua. Week 9 at Buffalo is going to be tough, but they're playing bad football over the past two weeks and then these next three games in Los Angeles against the Raiders at home against the Patriots at home that should be a 3-0 and stretch. Those three teams have been really bad this year. So if you're able to go 2-1 and one in Week 7, Week 8, Week 9, I would potentially put on the radar our 5-1 and one record in these next six games. And I think if you do that, you are going to be in the driver's seat to make the postseason. And heck, maybe you even still have a chance at the AFC East if you're able to take down Buffalo in Week 9. Show QB1 some love for me by spamming Uno down in the comments section. He is working tirelessly to get back for this organization and this team. 
I am excited to get Tua back, but I just hope he's safe first. But I want you to guys get active and spam those Unos down below. All right, before we move over to the bad news, if the Dolphins can win this game, and, and I kind of just said that, right? I think that if they're able to beat the Colts, you get Tua back in Week 8, which seems like it's progressing that way. The vibes around this team will be will never be higher. I know there were some disastrous moments on special teams in Week 5 against New England, and there were some bad moments against Tennessee as well at home. But if you are able to go against the Colts and win, be 3-3 three and three through the first six games of the season with everything you've had to deal with between Tua, Odell Beckham Jr., the Tyreek Hill incident, uh, Jalen Phillips being hurt, J Jordan Poyer, Javon Holland, like you have had to deal with so much chaos, so much injuries around your team. If you're able to be 500, getting to a back, the team will feel good. They will feel motivated and they will feel good about the direction that they're heading. And I think that will only lead to better results as we progress through the season. I'm telling you, Mike McDaniel, I'm begging, just win against the Colts with two weeks of preparation, getting a little bit more healthier as well outside of Javon Holland. And man, oh man, you're really going to have a chance, especially with Bradley Chubb waiting in the wings to return. All right, we'll have the bad news in just a second. But we are sponsored by Game Time. If you want to go to see the Dolphins in Week 8 against the Cardinals when they return back to Hard Rock, Game Time is the place to go get your tickets. You could also go to any economy show, concert, live event. It doesn't matter. And with the new feature called Game Time Picks that filters out the fluff to show you only incredible seats with great value to make sure you aren't wasting your time searching through thousands of tickets, how else would you get your tickets? It's so easy. The lowest price guaranteed. It's so guaranteed that if you happen to find a ticket on a different service that is cheaper than the one you see on game time in the same exact seat, same exact section, same exact row, they will credit you 110% of the difference. You can also see your seat in the app before you purchase. Get a panoramic view so you know exactly where you will be sitting in your specific venue. It is the easiest way to get your tickets, and boy, oh boy, do I like easy. And that's why I use game time when I went to LSU USC in week one of the college football season. And you can get $20 off your first purchase when you download the app and use code CHATSPORTS when you create an account. First purchase only, terms apply, but make sure you download the app, create an account, use C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S to get $20 off your first purchase. What time is it? It's game time. Appreciate them for sponsoring today's show. They are legends, and I am so happy that they help us get the easiest tickets here at Dolphins today. All right, it's time to get into the bad news for Miami because we talked about Javon Holland just a second ago, and it is a little bit of a bad news for him. And what you might be asking is, what is the news exactly? We know that he has a broken hand, or at least a bone in his hand. Well, Mike McDaniel at the press conference today labeled him week to week, which could be worse. He could have announced that he was going to be out multiple weeks or be out on IR. Now, having a bye week this week does make it more likely that he doesn't need to go on IR because he could return in four weeks, which would only be three games. But if you place him on IR, he has to miss four games. So that is something working in your favor here with an early bye week. But he has already been ruled out for NFL Week 7 against Indianapolis. That's the bad news here because that's something that you don't really need. And especially with a team that just lost Jalen Phillips, you need everybody healthy on the back end because your pass rush isn't going to be as good as it was with Jalen Phillips, obviously. And Holland has had an up-and-down start to the campaign in 2024 but he's a leader and someone who has been here for four seasons now and he knows what to expect he's only had 22 tackles he hasn't been that good in coverage you see the grade from PFF down below no takeaways or anything like that but the one thing that he has done that has potentially and we really look back at it now saving the season was that week one game against the Jacksonville Jaguars you were down 17 to 7 ETN was about to waltz into the end zone and take a 24-3 lead on you and that or 24-7 excuse me and that game would have been over late in that second half but Holland was able to punch it out, create a turnover, and then ultimately let Miami come back in that football game. And, well, we know now was their only win before week five. You need Holland in this group, and even though you're out a week, you're really going to have to lean on your depth here. Jordan Poyer, who missed this past week, could be returning after the bye week. We'll talk about him in just a second. Elijah Campbell and Marcus May had the play late in that game. Campbell actually had a really nice play late in that game. And Marcus May actually did impress me as well with his coverage and his range on the back end of that secondary. Although 
well, that team isn't very good at passing the football over in New England. Either way, you are going to have to rely on some faces that you didn't have to think you were going to rely on, and that's the part that concerns me. We'll talk more about this in a second, but if Javon Holland's out multiple games, how concerned are you with the safety room? Let me know your thoughts on it. Scout 1 to 10 down in the comments section. No rookie scores. Give me some decimals, folks. Mention Jordan Poyer. Mike McDaniel does expect him to be back after the bye against the Colts. It was a shin injury, missed New England, didn't obviously need him as you got the win. Like I said, Marcus May, I thought, filled in very, very nicely in this ball game. And then with another week off and it now being two weeks since we've seen Poyer in week four against the Titans, it feels like Miami is going to have him back. And he needs to start playing some good football because if we're going to be honest and completely transparent here, he has not been as good as we, I think, thought he was going to be coming into this season. He's a little bit older maybe he's going to get into the swing of things here soon but we need him to be playing his not all pro but at least an above average type of football that we've known him to play for the Buffalo Bills and if Javon Holland's not going to be placed on IR Jordan Poirier becomes that lead guy at the safety room but that also likely means that you're not going to sign someone to the 53-man roster because you'd have to release someone else or put someone else on IR, and why would they want to do that right now? So what I think you are going to be seeing from the Miami Dolphins on a weekly basis is Nick Needham elevated every week off the practice squad. That's where he currently is playing for. He's been in the organization for four-plus years. He was elevated this past week against the Patriots, didn't see a lot of playing time. Needham, someone who has worked at safety, worked at nickel, worked at corner, He's versatile. You have the three guys on the active roster that are healthy and Poyer, Campbell, May. You're probably going to have Poyer and May back there. Campbell is your third guy. And then need them up every single week to fill in if someone needs to go to the locker room or be injured or even play some cornerback. So I think Nick Needham is someone that is going to be called upon here to be on the active roster on a weekly basis moving forward, which is why when he was originally released, we talked about how surprising that was back in August, but we also talked about how huge it was that the Dolphins were able to keep him on the practice squad because we knew he would come into play at some point this season, and I think he is going to in the next couple of games. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. Make sure you are subscribed. Like I mentioned off the top, we're on the road to 62K subscribers. Live for every Dolphins game, breaking down news and rumors on the fins every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. So hit that sub button, and I'll see you tomorrow with more videos. Go fins.